This week's episode of the Angie Looked Up podcast is brought to you by Fine Lime Designs. If the name sounds familiar, that's because it's my design business and the work I do there helps make this podcast possible. If you love colorful and whimsical art prints, greeting cards, and journaling stickers, then head over to my Etsy shop for a delightful browse. Just search for Fine Lime, like the fruit, designs, all one word, on Etsy, or click the link in the show notes. And now, on with this week's episode. Welcome to the Anne She Looked Up podcast. Each week, we sit down with inspiring Canadian women who create for a living. We talk about their creative journeys and their best business tips, as well as the creative and business mindset issues all creative entrepreneurs struggle with. I'm your host, Melissa Hartfield, and after leaving a 20-year career in corporate retail, I've been happily self-employed for 12 years. I'm a graphic designer, an illustrator, and a multi-six-figure-a-year entrepreneur in the digital content space. This podcast is for the artists, the makers, and the creatives who want to find a way to make a living doing what they love. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the And She Looked Up podcast. As always, I'm your host, Melissa, and this week I am really excited to be welcoming Raj Thandi to the podcast, and we are going to be talking about choosing a word of the year to either represent your business or yourself or a combination of both. And I thought this would be a great episode to kick off a brand new year. So happy new year, everybody. And um, and I'm really excited to be welcoming Raj to the podcast. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Melissa. I'm so excited to be here with you today. I'm excited to be talking about what we are talking about. We actually, um, we had a little conversation a couple of weeks ago on Instagram about word of the year. And I was like, let's record a podcast about this. So yes. <laughs> For those of you who may not be familiar with Raj, she is a lifestyle and food blogger from Surrey, BC. She actually just lives like five minutes away from me, which is kind of cool. Her blog is Pink Chai Living, and it's a collection of recipes, DIYs, home decor inspirations, and life moments. And in her day job, she wears the hat of creative director at Pink Chai Media, which is a digital production company that specializes in content creation for the food and hospitality industry. She's also a mom to two teenagers, wife to a pretty great guy, and a lover of houseplants. And if you don't find her on Instagram stories where she's very active, she's probably lost in a good book. So the first question I ask everybody who comes on the podcast, Raj, is did you feel like you were creative as a kid? Yes, most definitely. <laughs> I was a very creative and imaginative kid. And um, I grew up with, you know, immigrant parents, and we didn't have a lot of the stuff that kids have now for being creative. So, you know, there was a lot of imaginary worlds built, a lot of creative playtime, um, a lot of pretend. And I, I just, one of my most vivid memories from childhood is I used to dream up the most elaborate worlds with multiple characters and I used to play all of them. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I used to do something similar, but that's so cool. I love that. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background. You live in Surrey. I think you were born and raised in Surrey, if I'm not mistaken. Or... I was born in Victoria. I lived oh, okay. there for the first few years of my life, but I'm a BC kid. I've been here my whole life. Um, I've been in Surrey pretty much since I was about 10, and here uh, we moved away for a few years to Abbotsford, but we came back here when my kids were younger to, um, you know, just to be close to the parents and, um, yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about, so, I mean, you were creative as a kid, and as you went through school... Where did you kind of see yourself? Did you think you would wind up in a creative career or did you think you'd wind up doing something more, and I'm saying this in quotation marks, traditional <laughs> career-wise? Uh, or like, how did how did your whole progression go to get where you are today? Uh, well, I was always a dreamer and I had big dreams. When I was quite young, I used to want to be a actress and a dancer and I was really into performing arts. 
um, I went through a phase where I wanted to study fine arts and then I wanted to study fashion. It was always something I wanted to do. And my sort of reoccurring thing I wanted to do as a kid was I wanted to work at magazines. So even when I was daydreaming about everything else I wanted to do, I always wanted to work in a, in a magazine space. Um, but my parents wanted me to do something a lot more uh, traditional, professional, you know, secure. Mm -hmm. uh, so there wasn't a lot of encouragement in that sense so you know I remember I wanted really wanted to go to Parsons to study fashion and this was way before Project Runway like when no one knew about Parsons I wanted to go <laughs> um and my parents were sort of you know especially my mom was just not for it because she you know wanted me to do something that was more secure is what it comes down to so um I ended up trying to study a variety of things. It didn't work out for me. I don't think I'm the kind of person that's made for the traditional school system or maybe the traditional school system <laughs> isn't made for me. So I ended up getting a diploma in graphic design, which was the middle ground to a creative, you know, studying at, like a creative route, but also something that my parents were like, okay, cool. You know, this was 1999. So it was, sort of like okay computers are an emerging industry at least she's doing something like that you know yeah graphic design is like people understand what that is like it's a as a job so I, I get it because I'm also a graphic designer but yes <laughs> and so after you went into graphic design because I know I know you do a little bit of that now but you have what I would consider a very multifaceted career at this point you would do a lot of different things and based on what you've just said that sounds like it suits your personality really well uh it does it does <laughs> I always say you know um all my life my father used to say to me you know jack of all trades master of none um that's good and it wasn't a compliment it really wasn't and as long as I can remember my, you know people around me have said like why don't you just pick a thing and do that um because I like change I like doing different things I don't primarily do graphic design anymore. In fact, in my entire career, I've never had a job that was exclusively graphic design. But um, my agency now is a digital marketing company in short. And it because of this industry that we, we're in, this digital marketing industry is constantly pivoting. So when I first got into this work, it was because I've always loved social media. I've always been online on these platforms, learning about them. So I started offering social media management as a service. And it, you know, I, I often think like it was, part of it was luck and timing. I was at the right place at the right time where there wasn't a lot of people that quite got it yet. And I was promoting this service. But then I also think I have a knack for this, um, this creative blend, you know, which is a little bit of writing, a little bit of visuals, you know, something that, I didn't study and I, I could have never imagined becoming my career. Like a huge part of the work I do is styling photography now. You know, I style flat lays for food. I style um, people for shoots sometimes, you know. Uh, so this beautiful sort of blend happened where I realized that all the things I had loved as a kid about wanting to be a performer really helped me direct people from behind the camera. So my company does a lot of like content production for restaurants and food businesses. Quite often I'm wearing the director's hat. Um, a lot of times I'm writing scripts. I've written scripts for radio commercials, for TV commercials. And basically when people say to me, you know, what do we do? I always say, whatever it takes to promote the brand that fits within, you know, ethical, legal, we do that. <laughs> that's what we do. So it's hard to sort of say exactly what we do. No, I think that's very true of most creative agencies today. It is such, and I think it's such a varied position. And I think it has drawn so many people to it because of that. I think there's a lot of people like you, and I'm very similar, who have always struggled to do the same thing every day, day in, day out, and really thrive on having a lot of different challenges and a lot of different outlets to, to mm -hmm. get all their creativity out. And I think that this point in time that we're in right now is just like a golden age for people like us yes um <laughs> so much so you know and it's like um you know going back to that quote I just shared that the, you know the jack of all trades I don't know if you saw but recently on Instagram I had shared something there was a 
sort of a voiceover audio going around that that's actually an incomplete quote. Yes, um, yes. You know, in the second half of it is, you know, but the master, like, I think it, I don't know the exact words are failing me right now, but it's that, you know, essentially that sometimes it's better to be, you know, good at many things than to be a master of one. And I really think we live in the generalist world right now like there I mean there are t- places like you don't want your surgeon to be like a, you know a singing surgeon well they can be in their <laughs> evening but you know you really want them to really focus on the practice of being a surgeon but I think we live in this like you said this beautiful world right now where there's actually an appreciation for multifaceted creatives and yeah. people are understanding that we have to allow for the blend you know years ago I used to work in a more traditional agency where the copywriter only did copywriting yeah. And, you know, the person who did the storyboard did the storyboard without having, you know, the set designer in the room. And it, those, I guess at some point in time that worked, but in just at the pace the world works at now, you know, we sometimes we have to produce a piece of content in six days that we would have had six weeks for before. So, so in this industry, I think now you have to be able to work with different people and look at different creatives and kind of blend those skill sets together a little bit, just the way things are shifting in the world today. Oh, hundred percent. I totally agree. And I, I really enjoy that whole type of world. <laughs> and it's, it's just made me extremely happy as a self-employed person for the last decade. And I know it's something you've been doing for quite some time but you're going through a bit of a shift in your business right now too as well you've mentioned that on social media (laughs) I have so um my business has seen a number of transformations over the years I went to the self-employed route 17 years ago now actually um and initially I was in a like a traditional publicist role and then you know we came into social media and for about the last seven years my business has been primarily focused on social media content production social media management and I have always had retainer clients and due to the nature of the industry and my clients a lot of them being in retail and restaurants like there's no Christmas there's no real time off because those are selling times of the year like for my clients, you know, so, and I do a lot of work in the ethnic marketing space. So quite often, you know, I'm working on Diwali and I'm working on Christmas and, you know, the availability to my clients, like I have to be on for any kind of emergencies and things. And it was really wearing on my spirit a little bit. And it was also kind of, um, I was feeling a real creativity drain because a huge part of my work, and I love to do this, is my own personal blog and my own personal IG, but I was coming to it with the least of me, you know, I was pouring so much into these projects for my clients and also just giving so much to that in terms of my time and availability that when I was coming to my personal project, I was feeling like it was with whatever leftover energy I had. And it just, it was really weighing on me. And I wanted to a, get my weekends and evenings back, you know, um, I just like, you know, my kids are getting older and I'm one of those blessed teenage parents whose kids still want to hang out with them. So as long as I have them, I want to give my full attention to them. And secondly, I just, I wanted to bet on myself, you know, um, I wanted to give myself. So I, I spent some time over the summer doing the budget because, you know, I have the studio space, I have staff, I am responsible for their paychecks, which is like the scariest thing in the world. Um, so I decided over the summer, I did the numbers, which as you know, as a creative is so hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> I did the numbers and I figured out what I needed to have in the bank to take six months off of like retainer client work. And I worked my butt off, like nobody's business for like three months. <laughs> So that was a very exciting, exhilarating, and terrifying day when I basically told all my retainer clients in one go that, um, you know, I'm going to be no longer offering that service as of January. And now I have this um, precious six month block that I have allocated to working on my personal brand online, developing content for Pink Chai Living, and growing our platform. That's exciting. I love that you said that you're betting on yourself too, because I think that's something a lot of people are really afraid to do. And I, and I totally understand why it's a really big step, but I just, I love the fact that you are actually making that step and saying what I do is important. So one of the things that you and I had talked about um, briefly before the new year on Instagram is 
choosing a word of the year. You had been asking your Instagram audience what um, if they did a word of the year and you were working on yours and you showed your list of all the words that you have done in the past and you have you have a pretty lengthy track record of doing this <laughs> <laughs> regularly and I was I it's something that I've done for I don't think I've been doing it as long as you have but it's something I've done for at least seven or eight years and it's always been something that I found really centering for me when I'm trying to think about what I want to accomplish in my upcoming year and so we thought this would be a great episode for all of you out there who are maybe debating whether or not to have a word of the year or maybe you've already chosen one and um, it's something that we've both benefited a lot from so we're going to talk about that now and maybe give all of you some ideas on what you could choose as a word of the year or how to think about it and why it can be so helpful not just in your business but in your life um and i think a lot of people tend to choose words that are applicable to both their business and their life but in your case raj how long have you been doing a word of the year because you have a pretty lengthy list going (laughs) i actually started that the word of the year in 2011 so this is my 10th word of the year awesome and what made you decide that very first year like what was it that because at that point you didn't know something you were going to do for 10 years or 11 years but what gave you the trigger to just try it you know I wish it was like a more positive and uplifting story but I was in like a pretty um I was going to say a word that I probably shouldn't say in the podcast I was in a pretty not nice place in my life I was a little bit you know stressed out there was a lot going on in my world and we were financially in some really tough spots as a family and I was kind of grasping for anything to hold on to and I had sort of been using Google to search for self-help things and you know jobs (laughs) and all that (laughs) kind of stuff and I came across a blog post about a word of the year and I thought you know what I need this I need something to hold on to so that I have you know a touch point And that year, the only thing I could think about was my finances. It was the only thing I could think about. But I didn't want to make money my word of the year. (laughs) So I chose prosperity as my word of the year. And and I kept trying to reframe that whole year how I think about finances. Like I, I really needed something that was more positive to pull on. And it was just such a good, you know, such a good thing for me to have in my back pocket when I was stressed out and I I can't remember my my mantra for that year because the one thing I never did all these years is write it down but almost every year I end up with like a line or a mantra or saying that I repeat around that word of the year and it just becomes like a a tape in my head for when I'm having a a low point or a moment where I need to come back to my center and, and remind myself why I'm working for what I'm you know especially particularly I find when I'm having challenges at work and I need to get myself motivated to do something it just reframes all my goals in just a few moments yeah totally and I want to come back to the mantra piece because I think that's super interesting I've never actually done that but that sounds like a really great way to reinforce it's almost like a um what do you call it um like an affirmation in a way pretty much yeah so um So like, for example, last year, my word of the year was unfold. And I chose last year's word as unfold because, you know, we were at the beginning of 2021 and we had no idea what was happening. (laughs) And we know it like there was so much uncertainty in the world. And I thought I am going to embrace the unfolding and give the universe permission to unfold things around me and to unfold for me. And every time I was stressed out, I would say to myself, life is unfolding just as it should. Life is unfolding just as it should. So that was kind of attracted. And this year, I've been like finding myself as I've been thinking about intention, thinking no more accidental living. It's time to get intentional. This is what I've said to myself is like, no more accidental living. It's time to get intentional. So just kind of to reframe my days because I I want to, oh, I didn't say my word (laughs) here is intention for 2022. (laughs) And that's a great word. I love the word intentional. I have a friend who's doing the same word. And there's something about that word that just makes me think of pausing um, before you do anything. You know, you just have that pause to really think it through. Like it's 
you know, what is the intention behind this? Where is this going to take me? That's a great word. I love that. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, I probably should have like built up to that in the podcast and we should have said, and, and the 2022 word is <laughs> intention. It's all good. Um, no, it's a great word. And I think even one of the things I love about doing a word of the year <clears throat> and your first word that you chose prosperity is that there's multiple ways you can look at a word like that. Like, yes, it can mean money and being financially stable or financially ahead, but it can also mean prosperity within your life, like within your family, within um, the way that you live. Like it can have very layered meanings when you step back and think about it. Yes. And that's, um, you know, this morning I was chatting with a friend who was really struggling to sort of pick a word for this year. And she was kind of like, you know, I want to pick something that's productive and I want to pick something that's energetic and, you know, I want to exercise more and I want to learn things. And I was like, you know, that's a, like, that sounds a lot like you're trying to make your goals be a word, but let's try and think about the feelings and the emotions that you want and the energy you want in the year. And in the end, we ended up with, after talking about a lot of things that the word that fit her the best was flow because it was really about allowing the things that were best for her and good for her to flow into her life this year. Mm, that's another really good word. Yeah. So if if you're listening and you can sort of see how these words can have such layered meaning and it can be a really powerful way to step back and think about what you're doing next. So what was it about that first year that made you continue on for another year? and then another year and another year. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say, one is that I'm just one of those people, like once I start doing something, I like like I like check marks for myself. <laughs> Me um, too. But also, it, I just really enjoyed it. Like it was, you know, I, I am one of those people that um, I can do really well with a business goal. You know, like a business goal makes sense to me. Make X number of phone calls, make X number of pitches, you know, sell this much. But personally, I've always sort of struggled with, you know, how to set these overarching goals. I'm not good at like go to the gym five times a week or, you know, cook more vegetables. Those, those are really hard for me. But when I think about a word of the year, it just kind of settles over my whole life and it it allows me to blend as a personal and professional because again, I don't do well when you have to have two sets of goals and you have to have, you know, two sets of intentions for the year when I have one intention and that blends over into both my personal and professional that just worked so well for me. And, um, I did end up having a fairly decent year that year in terms of what made me feel prosperity. And it focused me to be introspective. It, fo it forced me, sorry, to be introspective and revisit it every month. Um, yeah. And I just really enjoyed it. And actually the year after that, I had chosen create as my word. And that, and that time I was so over ambitious. Not only did I choose create as my word, but I challenged myself to create art for fun every Sunday mm -hmm. for the entire year. Sometimes it wasn't fun and sometimes <laughs> I had to challenge myself, but I just love that it's like a make it work for you and fit for you kind of a system yeah. for the new year. Yes, totally. Create is actually my word for this year. So oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's as somebody who creates for a living, it may seem mm -hmm. like a strange word, but one of the issues I tend to struggle with is that for me, creating always feels like playtime because I enjoy it so much. And so I tend to shove it to the bottom of my list of things to do. And I will work on pretty much anything but creating. And so this year I really wanted to focus on giving myself an hour every day at the start of the day to create. And not just for myself, but I mean like within my business, whether it's creating new designs for my illustration business or whether it's creating new products or just sitting my butt down in the chair <laughs> to create without feelings of guilt. Because that's the hardest part for me is I just always struggle with feeling like I should be replying to emails or I should be posting on social media or I should be pitching to a client or, you know, I should be doing client work. And, and uh, you can't be a creative for a living you're not. without creating. <laughs> oh, I feel that so much because that 
is exactly why I'm doing this six month thing that I'm doing, whatever it is. Yes. Um, <laughs> because la- so much of last year, I would sit down at my desk and be like, okay, I've blocked off time and I'm going to research my next DIY project. And then I would get all tingly and be like, what a waste of time. Yes. You could always research this later at home, but you should do X, Y, Z thing for someone else. And yep. actually no, like the most important, I would argue that the most important thing that people like you and I do for work is our creative time. Our best hours should be for our creative work. Yeah. I, oh, absolutely. 100% agree. It's, it is such a mindset issue. It's it's ridiculous. Like when you say it out loud, oh, I feel guilty creating, but isn't that what you do for a living? Like it sounds <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> and so I was just like this year, um, it's going to be the priority and I am going to give myself permission to sit down for an hour every day and there's no guilt attached. Like this is me doing my job and enjoying it and it's okay for me to enjoy my job <laughs> like, yes yes <laughs> it's I love it's, it yes yeah, it's so anyway I'm really hoping it helps me get over this whole mindset of yeah feeling guilt towards creating just <laughs> even know, saying that sounds silly no that's not the place you want to create from either like you want to like create from a space of just joy and yeah. and and we are the lucky ones that I don't, you know, know all about your history, but the, whatever path we took, it's never easy to get to this place where you can actually be a creative for a living. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it's our blessing and we have to honor that by creating as much as we can from the best place possible. Sorry. I'm a little, I was a little. No, <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. So it's, um, so If you're listening and you're sort of thinking about these words like one of the things that you can look at when you're trying to decide what to choose is what what some of your there's so many different ways you can look at it you can look at it from what is a challenge that you're trying to solve you can look at it from something that you want to explore um and there's there's so many different ways that you can pull a lot of different goals together under the umbrella of one word and I guess one of my questions for you is like, how do you go about picking your word every year? Um, Like, do you have, do you just have a feeling like this is what, this is the word I want to do? Or do you have a very kind of defined process to go through it or something in between? (laughs) I think it's a little bit in between. I think um, I've gotten better at sitting with it over the years because I used to sort of pick the first or second one I thought of. Um, What I try and do now is like, I think mid December last year, I sort of started thinking about it. I started thinking about how I feel for me, the word of the year always has to relate to a really positive feeling, something that makes me excited, but also some that, that sort of eludes to something more I want to invite into my life, like energy, feeling, emotion. And then I start writing words down and I journal. And this year I was actually 100% sure until about three days ago that I was going to have an entirely different word. And (laughs) the word I wanted to have, like the word that was calling to me all of December was bliss. Okay. And, you know, bliss because I've been really missing moments of bliss in my life I've been feeling like I want to make time for bliss and enjoyment and then the more I thought about it and I journaled about it more it kept sort of coming up for me that I'm not ready for that and it's going to be a lot of pressure to me because if I had made my word of the year bliss at this very nervous time of my life every day I would have been like oh did did I feel blissful today like (laughs) did I experience bliss today and that felt like a lot and I thought you know what all of a sudden it just came to me in the shower where I have all my best ideas <laughs> that I have to set the intention for bliss this year. I have to be more intentional with my time, more intentional with my decisions to leave space for the things that make me happy. And then I just sort of wrote it out and I realized that really I need to create these routines and pockets of space in my life to invite bliss. But bliss is not my word of the year. It's, going to be a result of my intention to create time for more things that make me happy yeah that makes a lot of sense and it's funny because my 
process was very similar this year. I had another word in mind for most of December. Um, and I only decided on create on New Year's Day. So, and <laughs> oddly enough, in the shower as well, because that is also where I get all my best ideas. So, um, yeah, and, and I think that's important to realize is, is you don't just have to pick the first word that comes to you. I think sitting with it, it can be a really important part of the process of picking a word because it gives you time to think about it. I love that you journal as well to kind of help you zero in on what it is that you're feeling. I also think, because we're talking about this the first week of January, and if you haven't chosen a word yet, don't feel like there has to be this pressure to just pick one, pick one tomorrow or pick one today. Like you can, you can still give yourself time to think it through um, and reflect on the things that you have done in the past year and the things that you want to do in this year. And, you know, January is a long month, so you don't have to pick something tomorrow, but you can think about it and still get the benefits of having a word of the year, even if you don't pick something until the end of the month. I think that's important to recognize. I also think that you can start a new year any day of the year that Agreed. you like. <laughs> so I so agree with that. <laughs> like January 1 is so arbitrary. And it is. <laughs> also like the word of the year does not own you like you pick that word and if you pick it and then like a week later you're like oh shoot I wish I'd picked this one because it's calling to me for this reason now just change it change it um yes. you know like I, I don't it, this is not meant to be an exercise in like um, forcing yourself into a box or committing to something and I would further say if you get three months into the year and you think you know, this isn't fitting right. It's not sitting with me. I'm going to pick a new word of the season for spring. Mm. You're the boss of you. Go <laughs> right ahead and do that. Like, it's not meant to be. For me, it's so important that the word of the year fit me and feel right and, you know, have the right vibe. I If it at any time starts to feel like it's not fitting, um, it's okay you can change it or if you're like me and you can't bring yourself to change it because you're one of those people that can't scratch things out in your notebook and it ruins your life then you can just add additional words below it yeah you know, now and you're it... learning all my strange tendencies <laughs> no no it's actually a little weird because I think we have a lot of very similar <laughs> tendencies I am the same way I like my check boxes I like them yeah so anyway um <laughs> I, one of the things you just said there that I hadn't thought of, but that I really like is that you can have a word for a season. And I think, I think yes. you could do that. Even if you have a word for the year, you can still pick words for different seasons. And I think that's, that's so great. I could see that. I don't have kids, but I could see that working really well. If you're a parent and you want to pick a word for summer, when your kids are out of school, that kind of reflects the type of summer that you want to have with them or, when they go back to school and you have more time for yourself and your business. And I think that is a really interesting idea. And I'm going to think about that a little bit more for myself. No, I, I love seasonal intentions and seasonal mm -hmm. goals. It's something I, John, funny you said about the kids. It's something I started doing with my kids when they were little, like we would do, we would write a little summer bucket list together and we would write like a winter bucket list together. And, it, and even now I find Whenever I ask them, and you know, they're older, they're 17 and 14. And when I, when it, I still include them and say like, oh, hey guys, like, what do you think you want to do over Christmas this year? And it always surprises me that what they, what they want to do is so simplistic. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, oh, maybe we can make meatloaf. And I'm like, great, that's a memory I can make. <laughs> you know, like that is really easy for me to do. And that's kind of become my sort of thought process, even with goals for myself or intentions that every season is a good time to revisit your word of the year your feelings for the coming season definitely so do you have something in place where you intentionally check in with your word of the year throughout the year do you have like do you blog about it or do you just sort of check in with yourself what do you kind of do so I started another practice about three years ago that the last Sunday of every month I set kind of a two or three hour date with myself and I just now it's COVID time. So, you know, obviously it's all weird, but I used to love like going to a coffee shop or, um, you know, I, sometimes I've taken myself out for a glass of wine and just sat with all my thoughts about that month. 
and I try and kind of think through it. And that's when I try and think through my word of the year, any other goals I've set for the year, just to like reset. Because I think 12 months is a really long time in the case of any intention or goal. And we just forget. Mm -hmm. And I think about every 30 days is a great time to check in with yourself, even maybe every six weeks, if you think like 30 days is too soon. Um, But I wouldn't let it go more than six weeks if you really are committed to and serious about wanting this feeling in your life because it's a different type of a goal you know it's not like a goal where you can um I don't know get on the scale every morning or check if you like put give yourself a check mark for how many bottles of water you drank today you kind of have to check your feelings meter every few weeks or every yeah it's not so often it's not a check mark goal it's it it for me it very much is like a feelings goal that's a weird thing to say but I totally get what you're what you're saying there that it's kind of like one of those things where you check in and how am I feeling and does this fit and am I do I feel like I'm making progress with this or is it you know like there's a lot of different things I used to do when I was still writing my personal blog which has been very very neglected for the last two years um I used to do a quarterly check-in post I would always tell everybody what my goal would be and then I would do a a quarterly check-in where I would sort of tell them you know this is this is what happened this is how it sort of fits and um and that was a really I did it mostly for myself because it was a really good way for me to check in with myself and just see like right you know is it is this working is it not working what am I learning all those kinds of things so I do think I agree with you I think it's important to just take some time whether it's once a month once every two months once a quarter um and just have a check-in with yourself another thing that I do in my paper planner is I have a little um, box under every day where I just have intention written and then I fill it in at the in the first thing in the morning like kind of what is my intention for the day and it's not like a goal or anything it's just sort of like a it's like a feeling like how do I want to feel today and I tie that in usually with my word of the year like they kind of tend to go together Um, and and that really helps me keep it front and center I guess sort of reinforcement (laughs) I love that having a daily feeling intention yeah it's different from I do a gratitude practice too but they're they're different and I think to a lot of people they sound the same but they're actually very different to me so um yeah it's just good and sometimes you know it's just something as simple as like don't blow up today (laughs) my intention is to be (laughs) calm (laughs) or something like that so have you because you talked about this where you said that um you know if you sit if if three months go by and you realize this word's just not working like it's okay to change it have you ever been in a situation where your word just didn't fit or didn't work out and and did you change it halfway through or has that ever happened to you you know one year I chose the word ease as my word of the year and I chose ease because um I'm a sewer and ease is the space that you leave between your cut and your seam line to give yourself a little breathing room if you need it or, you know, to fix things when you're sewing. And it felt like I needed ease in my life. And I chose this word, but every, you know, every couple of weeks I felt frustrated at myself because I didn't have any give in my life at the time, but it was really the wrong year to choose that. My kids were really young and they were taught like they were, I think my daughter was in kindergarten that year and I was starting a business and It was just so much going on in my life that it was kind of really ambitious and wishful thinking (laughs) to think (laughs) that that was going to be the year. And I really wish I had changed my word of the year. But now this is like, you know, that's my, that was my younger self. That was my, you know, probably 34 year old self to my 41 year old self now (laughs) thinking that that was a different version of me that used to put a lot of pressure on myself that would have seen that changing that as a personal failure. Whereas Mm -hmm. my current version of me would be like, just change it and be happy every day. (laughs) And like, you know, that's, that's actually gross when you recognize that, Hey, this doesn't fit and I'm going to try something that fits me better. So I wish I had, that's why I say (laughs) to everyone now that don't be like a slave to your word. Your word works for you. It's not the other way around. Absolutely. I think that's one of the beauties of turning 40 is you do tend to let things go a little more. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I wish, 
I wish we could tell all the 30 year olds in our life, like I give you permission to feel like you're going to feel when you're 40 right now. I know. Like I wish, like I could go back and tell my 30 year old self, like just here's some 40 year old magic dust. (laughs) I know. I've often said that if I could go back and talk to myself when I was 20, the piece of advice I would give myself is to just stop worrying because I worry about everything. And, you know, you kind of, hit your 40s and you realize like yeah stuff's bad stuff's going to happen but um you're still here and it's all good so just just stop worrying yeah (laughs) it does not help anything at all when you're constantly in a state of worry but sometimes that's easier said than done um yeah so let's talk a little bit about choosing a word that because I think it sounds like you do this, that you pick a word that doesn't only encompass your business, but also encompasses your personal life as well. And I think this could be really challenging for some people out there who've never done this before. But uh, how do you kind of go, how do you, how do you pick a word that you feel will work for both areas of your life? Or do you always pick a word that works for both areas of your life? So I tend to pick something. I think I've always chosen something that has overlap. And I think that's a little bit easier when you're Mm self-employed or when you um, work from home, you know, when you have a blend between personal and professional, I understand that if you have a very corporate job, it might be, you might actually want to divide it because you, you might be like, you know what, I'm missing this in my professional space. So I want to create this feeling in my personal space. So there are going to be exceptions where people may want to have a separate word, For me, I find that generally speaking, if I really get to the core of what I'm feeling, that feeling has bled over into my personal life Mm -hmm. and it's bled over into my work life. So, you know, one of the words I had one year was unapologetic. Oh, I (laughs) love that. (laughs) That one was particularly because I don't know how to say no. Like I, Mm -hmm. I have, I have such a hard time saying no. And that goes both with personal commitments and with um, clients creeping out of scope of work (laughs) or asking for things that aren't, you know, really things they should be asking for. And that's why I had sort of said to myself, I'm going to be unapologetic about asking for the things I deserve or saying no to things I can't do. Because when I do have to say no, I'm so like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Like it's it's ridiculous. So, (laughs) so unapologetic, it worked for me so well across the board um and and i think that's why if you focus really on the word being about you because it's not really about and this is where it gets tricky right because this like this year intention is not about i'm not going to be like oh i intend to make 50 phone calls about work this month Mm -hmm. like sales calls are a business goal um you know so you have to really keep it focused to your how you how it makes you feel and how it adds value to your overall life like if you start focusing too much on it being a quantifiable personal or professional goal it loses for me the point of the word of the year yeah i i totally agree i think that's something important to remember if you're thinking about doing this is that it's it's not a goal in the traditional sense of what we think of as goals it really is um it it can be so esoteric and almost sound airy fairy kind of thing when when you hear it being talked about and it really does part of it really does come from your your gut um but it is more of an overarching thing for most of us and most of the people who listen to this podcast are self-employed so for a lot of us when you're self-employed you're you're business and your life do intertwine however much we might try to keep them separate Um, it's really hard to do that when you're self-employed for many reasons so I think that that's um, something to really think about when you're doing this is that it's like we said earlier it's not a check mark goal that you're going to at the end of the year you're not going to put a check mark next to your word of the year and say yeah did it (laughs) <laughs> it's, it's not quite the same. <laughs> okay, so, tell the truth, Melissa. You and I are totally going to do that at the end of the year. <laughs> this might and be the one thing ourselves. I don't do. This might be the oh. one thing I don't do a check mark for. But um, so, 
Would you be willing to share maybe some of the other words, like you've, you've mentioned a few, but what are some of the other words that you have done through the year just to give people a sense of like some ideas, maybe a little word of the year inspiration? <laughs> of course. Um, uh, one year I had chosen shine as my word of the year. And that was when I was sort of trying to push myself into uh, embracing who I was and not play myself down too much or be too humble, which I think a lot of female entrepreneurs end up doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have had learn one year, which was because I really wanted to challenge myself to grow my skill sets, both as just for fun and also for my professional growth. Um, You know, it was really funny in 2020, I chose celebrate as my word of the year because I was turning 40 and I had all of these like big plans to like have this like big birthday party and I had booked this trip to France and all these things and um, it was also about I just wanted to be more celebratory in the moment and man it felt like what a dumb word to choose for 2020 <laughs> celebrate but you know it ended up being that we had, we did so many amazing things in 2020 and we ended up celebrating in little ways. Like I celebrated my birthday all month long. I just like, I did things every day that were for me and it was such a great eye opener. And that's like maybe a bit of an airy fairy thing to say that sometimes you do have to give space for the universe to show you other definitions Mm -hmm. of a word. Like there's great learning there. Um, Other words I've used create, I've used focus, abundance um unfold was my word last year yeah those are some of my yeah i love the of... um i love the celebrate one i i think that actually i i know that is totally not what you were going for that year and i think it could have been so easy for you to abandon it or just be bummed out the whole year <laughs> um and the fact that you took it and turned it into something really positive for yourself and for your family because I think so many people struggle to do that. Uh, I was going to say last year, but 2020 is now the year before last year. (laughs) So, um, yeah. yeah. And I think that's a really important uh, lesson there is that you do find hidden meanings in your word once you really dive into it. And it's, it really opens up um, how you perceive things. You can perceive things very differently when you really focus in on a specific word. So, that's really interesting. I like that. Um, yeah, a couple of the words that I have done that have worked really well for me that I really love doing. Um, one was color uh, because I am somebody who just basically throws up rainbows is <laughs> what I say. Um, I really love bright, bold color. And and I often felt like I had to minimize or hide that part of my spells, particularly when I worked in the corporate world. And so... One year, I was just like, you know what? I am just going to throw up color everywhere. And I'm just going to add as much color into my life and look for color. And the interesting thing with color is it doesn't just have to mean like actual shades of color. (laughs) It can just mean bringing more joy and uh, life to your life. Like just seeing the world in technicolor kind of thing. So that was a good word for me. And another one that I really love doing and that I kind of always have in my back pocket every year since then is minimize. And that was, um, Ooh. yeah, that was, that was a huge one for me. And I, I loved that year. I chose it um, because I wanted to uh, streamline <laughs> my life a little bit. Um, but it wound up seeping over into things like... Um, I didn't intend for it to be like a, a an eco-friendly type of year, but that certainly became part of it. Um, just minimizing what I consume. Cons- consumption was another word that I chose that I really enjoyed. Um, and that was meant to be focused more on what I consume from an eco-friendly, sustainable point of view. But I also realized as I got into it that it also uh, was about the content and the media that I choose to consume. Um, Mm -hmm. And I started to become very much more, a lot more intentional about things like 
you know, how much time I spend in front of a screen and what I'm consuming when I'm on that screen and social media and the type of books that I read and all those things. And um, that was not something that I expected at the beginning of the year, but I realized that consumption uh, means a lot of different things. And that's one of the great things about choosing a word of the year is that it does have all these layers. And sometimes you don't even realize the layers when you pick the word. It's not until you start to get into the year and see how the year unfolds and you realize that there's so much depth to this word that you chose and it can really change your whole perspective on your year. So there's so much um, with choosing a word of the year that can really have such an impact on your year. And you've obviously felt that way because you have been doing this for many years now, as have I, and it's worked out really well for you. You said your word this year is intention. Yes. And so what are you hoping that it motivates you to accomplish this year? Do you have some ideas in your head that you want to share? So for me with intention, I have kind of this loose goal or um, thought process that I really want to be more intentional with my time, my money, and my love. I feel these are three things that I give away a lot of and spend a lot of, but I'm not always thinking about, you know, how much currency I'm giving away in all three of these areas and also how I feel about the energy I'm receiving in return. So I really want to be more intentional in how I'm spending these resources, but I also want to just, like you said earlier about the word intention is it makes you stop and pause. And my real sort of challenge to myself is when I make a commitment, when I agree to do something, when I agree to give my time or my energy to someone, I also want to ask myself, like, what's your intent? Like, why are you doing this? It's not always about, I think sometimes we think like, oh, I've, I keep doing these things for other people, but sometimes on the inside, there's some other reason we're doing those. So what I'm hoping is that I'll be able to connect more with what's going on inside of me. And also when I get to the end of the year, I'll feel like the exchanges I made with people in terms of people, the universe, you know, different experiences in terms of time, money, and love will feel equitable and balanced. Mm, I love that. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so we are, we're coming up on the hour now, and I just wanted to say thank you for being on the show this week because this has been this has been a really fun discussion. This is something that I get really excited about, um, and I'm really hoping that all of you listening that we gave you something to think about, and that we maybe gave you a little encouragement to choose a word of the year if you haven't already. And I'll do a little poll on Instagram after we release the episode um, for those of you who want to share what your word of the year with us is, because we'd love to know. And yes. uh, yeah, that would be really fun. So Raj, tell everybody where they can find you on the interwebs and what's next for you in the next few months. Okay, so <laughs> you can find me at Pink Chai. That's pink like the color, chai like the drink. That's me pretty much everywhere. You can find me. Um, I'm most active on Instagram. I am on YouTube. I am sometimes on Twitter. And my blog is pinkchailiving.com. Over the next few months, um, I am hoping to create some really unique and special content uh, geared at some of my South Asian female followers and around uh, festivals and holidays content that I think doesn't always get created or get prioritized things that I think are resources that are missing in the community and also mostly just having a lot of fun on IG stories because for the first time in a decade I'm not worried about what people are thinking about me on IG because <laughs> they're not my clients <laughs> Oh, that's such a different, uh, that's such a different feeling when you get to be all of yourself <laughs> in the real world. All of my dorky self <laughs> is coming to IG this year. <laughs> I look forward to it very much. Um, we will have links in the show notes to all of Raj's um, social media handles and to her blog so that you can find her and make it really easy. And yeah, thanks again for being here today. This was really fun. It was nice to get a chance to get to know you a little better and to chat we've been 
we've been Instagram friends for a while now, and um, it's I think we discovered we we literally live five minutes away from each other, like just before the pandemic started. So maybe one day we'll get yes. to go for a cup of coffee or something. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be lovely. Thank you so much for having me. This was such a fun way to start my first official work day of the year. This is the energy I wanted to bring into 2022. So it's perfect. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. All right, everybody. Well, that is it for this week. I will be back next week with another brand new episode and lots of fun content for 2022. And as always, you can find us on Instagram at and she looked up. We're also on Facebook as and she looked up. And that's it for me this week. So thanks everybody for joining us and we'll talk to you all next week. Thank you so much for joining us for the And She Looked Up Creative Hour. If you're looking for links or resources mentioned in this episode, you can find detailed show notes on our website at andshelookedup.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for our newsletter for more business tips, profiles of inspiring Canadian creative women, and so much more. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to subscribe to the show via your podcast app of choice so you never miss an episode. We always love to hear from you, so we'd love it if you'd leave us a review through iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Drop us a note via our website at andshelookedup.com or come say hi on Instagram at andshelookedup. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.